A dedicated social worker is providing ongoing support to a 40-year-old client who has been diagnosed with a severe and persistent mental illness. The client has been prescribed a medication regimen to manage their condition, but they have been experiencing distressing side effects from the medication. During a therapy session, the client expresses their strong desire to discontinue taking the prescribed medications due to the side effects. What ethical principles should primarily guide the social worker's response to the client's request? A. The principle of autonomy. B. The principle of beneficence. C. The principle of justice. D. The principle of non-maleficence. A. The principle of autonomy. In this complex situation, the ethical principle of autonomy takes precedence. While the social worker should consider the client's autonomy and their right to make decisions about their treatment, they should also engage in a thorough discussion with the client about the risks and benefits of discontinuing medication. This discussion allows the social worker to explore alternatives, address concerns, and work collaboratively with the client to make informed decisions about their mental health treatment. The principle of autonomy respects the client's right to choose while ensuring their well-being is prioritized. A social worker is operating a private practice and utilizes electronic record-keeping for client sessions. The social worker faces a dilemma regarding the electronic storage of client records. On one hand, they want to ensure the utmost security and confidentiality of the records to protect their client's privacy. On the other hand, they are considering the convenience of sharing electronic records with a trusted colleague for the purpose of enhancing client care. What ethical and legal obligation should the social worker diligently adhere to regarding the electronic storage of client records, taking into account this dilemma? A. Delete all electronic records after each session to protect client confidentiality. B. Maintain electronic records securely and protect client confidentiality while exploring secure ways to share with colleagues. C. Share electronic records with colleagues to enhance client care without obtaining informed client consent. D. Keep electronic records accessible to the public to promote transparency. B. Maintain electronic records securely and protect client confidentiality while exploring secure ways to share with colleagues. Social workers should prioritize client confidentiality while also seeking secure and ethical ways to share information with colleagues when necessary. Option B reflects this ethical and practical approach to the dilemma presented in the question, emphasizing both the importance of safeguarding client information and exploring secure sharing methods without compromising confidentiality. Options A, C, and D do not address the dilemma adequately. A social worker is providing therapy to a client who is struggling with substance abuse issues. The social worker, who is in recovery from substance abuse and shares this information with the client, begins recounting personal stories of their own recovery journey to offer support and motivation. What ethical principle is the social worker potentially violating in this situation, and how might it impact the therapeutic alliance? A. The principle of competence. B. The principle of beneficence. C. The principle of self-disclosure. D. The principle of confidentiality. C. The principle of self-disclosure. The social worker is potentially violating the principle of self-disclosure, which should be used judiciously and for the benefit of the client. While some self-disclosure can enhance the therapeutic relationship, excessive or inappropriate self-disclosure may shift the focus away from the client's needs and experiences, potentially hindering the therapeutic alliance. It's essential for social workers to carefully consider the timing and relevance of self-disclosure in therapy to ensure it serves the client's best interests. A social worker with many years of experience is working in a child protective services agency and is assigned to a highly sensitive case involving a child who has been physically abused by their parents. 
During the initial assessment, the social worker discovers that the child's parents are not only close friends of their own family but have also helped the social worker personally in the past during a difficult time. What complex ethical dilemma does the social worker face in this situation and how should they navigate it? A. A conflict of interest, as their personal relationship with the child's parents may bias their decision making. B. A boundary violation, as their involvement in the case may blur professional boundaries. C. A breach of confidentiality, as the social worker may inadvertently disclose sensitive information to the child's parents. D. A failure to maintain professional objectivity, as they may struggle to remain impartial due to their personal connection. A. A conflict of interest, as their personal relationship with the child's parents may bias their decision-making. In this scenario, the social worker faces a significant ethical dilemma related to a conflict of interest. Their personal relationship with the child's parents may create bias or the perception of bias in their decision-making. To address this dilemma, the social worker should consider recusing themselves from the case or seeking supervision and guidance to ensure impartial and ethical decision-making. This situation underscores the importance of maintaining professional boundaries and objectivity in social work practice. A social worker is providing counseling to a 16-year-old client who has recently disclosed a history of self-harm and recurring suicidal thoughts. The client's parents express deep concern and request access to their child's therapy records to monitor their progress and well-being. What ethical considerations should guide the social worker's response to the parent's request for access to the records? A. Provide the parents with full access to the records to promote transparency and family involvement. B. Obtain informed consent from the client before sharing any records with the parents. C. Share only non-sensitive information from the records with the parents to protect the client's privacy. D. Refuse to share any information with the parents to uphold the client's confidentiality and trust. D. Obtain informed consent from the client before sharing any records with the parents. In this situation, it is essential for the social worker to consider the client's age, capacity, and the principles of informed consent. The client, as a minor, should have the opportunity to provide informed consent or withhold it regarding the sharing of the therapy records with their parents. This approach respects the client's autonomy while addressing their parents' concerns and upholds confidentiality and trust in the therapeutic relationship. Providing full access to the records, option A, may breach the client's privacy, refusing to share any information, option B, without considering the client's perspective may not be in the client's best interest, while sharing only non-sensitive information, option C, may not fully respect the client's right to privacy. A seasoned social worker is providing clinical supervision to a junior colleague who is grappling with a particularly challenging case involving child abuse. The junior colleague expresses profound feelings of frustration, helplessness, and emotional distress during the supervision session. What is the social worker's ethical responsibility in this supervisory relationship, considering the junior colleague's emotional state and the complexity of the case? A. Offer personal advice and share similar experiences to guide the junior colleague. B. Maintain professional boundaries and provide guidance based on ethical and clinical standards. C. Encourage the junior colleague to handle the case independently without assistance. D. Avoid discussing the challenging case to prevent emotional distress. B. Maintain professional boundaries and provide guidance based on ethical and clinical standards. In this scenario, the social worker's ethical responsibility is to maintain professional boundaries and adhere to ethical and clinical standards. While it's important to address the junior colleague's emotional distress, sharing personal advice or similar experiences, option A, may blur boundaries and compromise professional objectivity. 
encouraging the junior colleague to handle the case independently. Option C, without appropriate guidance may not be in the best interest of the colleague or the client. Avoiding discussion of the challenging case, option D, does not address the supervision needs effectively. Option B aligns with the ethical obligation to provide guidance while maintaining professional boundaries. A social worker is working in a community outreach program, providing support to clients experiencing homelessness and severe mental health issues. The social worker has built a trusting therapeutic relationship with a client who suddenly expresses a strong desire to end their own life during a late night phone call. The client's tone and language indicate an immediate risk. What is the social worker's primary ethical obligation in this critical situation? A. Ensure the client's safety by any means necessary, including involuntary hospitalization. B. Respect the client's autonomy and collaboratively develop a safety plan. C. Disregard the client's statements about suicide as they may be a cry for attention. D. Notify the client's family about their intentions without their consent. A. Ensure the client's safety by any means necessary, including involuntary hospitalization. In this high-risk situation where the client's immediate safety is at stake, the social worker's primary ethical obligation is to take all necessary steps to ensure the client's safety, including, if required, initiating involuntary hospitalization or crisis intervention services. The client's autonomy is important but it must be balanced with the duty to prevent harm in situations of imminent danger. Additionally, the social worker should follow established protocols and regulations regarding suicide risk assessment and intervention. A social worker working in a busy hospital setting receives a subpoena to release a client's therapy records for use in a legal proceeding. The client is currently undergoing treatment for a severe mental health condition and is unaware of the subpoena. The requesting party is the client's estranged family member who is involved in a legal dispute with the client. What should the social worker do in response to the subpoena, considering the ethical and legal implications? A. Comply with the subpoena without notifying the client to avoid causing distress. B. Immediately release all requested records to the requesting party as per the legal requirement. C. Notify the client about the subpoena and consult with legal counsel to protect their rights. D. Refuse to comply with the subpoena to protect client confidentiality and prevent potential harm. C. Notify the client about the subpoena and consult with legal counsel to protect their rights. In this complex situation, the social worker should prioritize the client's rights and well-being. This involves notifying the client about the subpoena to ensure their awareness and consulting with legal counsel to navigate the legal requirements while safeguarding client confidentiality and interests. Option C respects the client's autonomy and confidentiality while addressing the legal request. Option A is not appropriate because it fails to uphold the ethical principle of client confidentiality and informed consent. Option B is also not advisable because it does not consider the potential harm or distress that releasing the records without the client's knowledge may cause. While protecting client confidentiality is important, Option D, refusing to comply with a valid legal subpoena without proper legal consultation can lead to legal consequences for the social worker and their agency. A social worker, deeply committed to their own political beliefs and values, is assigned to work with a client who holds opposing political beliefs and values. The client's convictions are in stark contrast to the social worker's deeply held principles. The client has sought therapy for help with managing intense distress related to societal issues that align with their beliefs. What ethical principles should most strongly guide the social worker's approach to working with this client, considering the challenging clash of values? A. The principle of advocacy. B. The principle of cultural competence. C. The principle of self-disclosure. D. The principle of professional objectivity. D. 
D. The principle of professional objectivity. In this situation, the social worker should prioritize the principle of professional objectivity, which means maintaining a non-judgmental and unbiased stance when working with clients, even when their beliefs differ significantly from the social worker's own. This approach ensures that the client's autonomy and self-determination are respected, and their best interests are the primary focus of the therapeutic relationship. While advocacy, option A, cultural competence, option B, and self-disclosure, option C, can be important in other contexts, professional objectivity is especially crucial when navigating this challenging clash of values. A social worker is employed at an agency that provides counseling services to individuals who have experienced trauma. While working closely with clients, the social worker becomes aware of a colleague's unethical conduct. The colleague is consistently disclosing confidential client information to their friends outside of work, breaching client confidentiality. What should the social worker do in response to this situation? A. Ignore the colleague's behavior to avoid conflict within the workplace. B. Report the colleague's unethical conduct to their immediate supervisor or ethics committee. D. Confront the colleague directly and attempt to resolve the issue informally. B. Report the colleague's unethical conduct to their immediate supervisor or ethics committee. In this scenario, the social worker is faced with a serious ethical dilemma involving the breach of client confidentiality by a colleague. Reporting the colleague's unethical conduct to their immediate supervisor or ethics committee is the appropriate course of action to ensure the protection of client confidentiality and adherence to ethical standards. Ignoring the behavior, option A, may perpetuate harm to clients, and confronting the colleague directly, option D, may not guarantee resolution while risking workplace conflict. Discussing the colleague's behavior with clients, option C, would further breach client confidentiality and is not an ethical solution. I trust this video has proven to be informative in enhancing your comprehension of social work license exam questions. If you're interested in expanding your studies, I assure you a captivating and enlightening 90-minute study session where we'll analyze questions and explore real-world applications. Come and join me for an amazing learning experience. Enroll today and gain access to an amazing chance to receive my exclusive ebook with 70 social work practice questions or my comprehensive online practice exam with 150 social work questions. And that's not all. As a bonus, you will also receive my highly sought after strategies for success activity ebook at no cost. This amazing bundle is crafted to empower you on your learning journey and guarantee your ongoing success. Don't pass up on this opportunity, enroll today. Visit my website, gilbertembell.com and find the sign up link in the description below. Alternatively, you could text the word study to 347-683-7923. I am excited to study alongside you and assist you in reaching your full potential as a social worker. Thank you once more for tuning in.